Welcome to the studio, ladies and gentlemen. I go by the name Chris Beat, the drummer boy, and you're welcome to Way Radio Studios, where we bring the world to you. So, I've been thinking to myself that I want to really take you guys on a mixing. In case you don't know, I studied audio technology. I'm a certified trainer. I can train you to mix and master, in case you don't know. So, yeah. Even though I don't like to mix and master because, you know, it takes a lot of my time and everything. But I feel like, okay, yeah. Let me show you the general mistakes um, that beginners make is not knowing how to compress, right? It's not knowing how to use a compressor. So I'm going to show you Afrobeat style. There's nothing like Afrobeat style, but yeah, in mixing. I'm going to show you how to hear a compressor and how to know what a compressor is doing so you can i think we can call this video compressor 101 or something but yeah the do's and don'ts of compressors on how to do it there's no really do's and don'ts for compressing so i'm going to show you how to know what your dynamic range is you know all this what your ratio how to set a good ratio fast attack slow attack fast release slow release hey, when you say slow release it sounds <laughs> like slow release but yeah you get the gist so we're going to go into the studio and i'll show you after the intro <laughs> Welcome back to the studio, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a little, not, not entirely different, but a little bit because I will go into some technical time. I saw most of you guys' comment in the last uh, session. You said, oh, how do we do it professionally? So I want to start showing you how to do it professionally. So let's start by saying, what is a compressor? I mean, what is the definition of a compressor? So let's type that on Google and see what Google has to say dynamic range compression oh thank you google i think yeah this is this will even show us what we're planning to do dynamic range compression or simply compression is an audio signal processing operation that reduces volume notes that reduces volume of loud sound or amplifies quiet sound let's leave all the whole doors blah 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 so what is a compressor in a layman's term? Compressor is how loud or how low your signal is. You don't need to, don't remember any other thing. Compressor, if you hear compressor, just know the person is talking about, okay, how do you want the signal to be? Do you want the signal to be loud or do you want it to be low? Do you understand? Or do you want it even out? I'm still going there. So the major thing you need to think about is volume. You know, sometimes you can go and adjust volume bit by bit. Before I compress vocals, I like to go and use my fader here to drive. Once the vocal is playing, I'll automate it. If I want the place loud, I increase it. If I want it low, I reduce it. So what a compressor does is a compressor helps you to do that behind the scene that you won't see it. Before we start trying out this thing, let's understand what a dynamic range is. What is a dynamic range? A dynamic range talks about the lowest uh, part of your song and the highest part of your signal let me show you in let me show you and stop speaking english so if i play this drum loop here look at my screen the highest part of this signal is almost that let me let me bring it up so that we'll be able to see it very well yeah it's, it's almost minus six let's say the highest is minus six the lowest is this minus 24 d Remember, dB is how you measure sound. dB, decibel is how you measure sound. So, zero is like, if you, if you have this as zero, you're already clipping. We'll talk about gain staging. After this, gain staging is a, is a very important part of any mix you want to do in this life. Gain staging. So, see, the amount of space we have from minus six to zero is what we call headroom that's what the engineer will say oh please give me like minus six headroom so this is the roof of our room zero is the roof of our room think about it like that and minus six down here is the space so we can have two story building minus 36 minus 24 minus 12 minus six or minus you know whatever minus you have according to your fader so from here from minus six to minus 24 the lowest part of our this thing is 24 minus 24 the loudest is minus 26 so those are the dynamic range that is our dynamic range our dynamic range is from minus six please follow me 
I know it sounds like was too much, but if you can understand this, it will help you a lot in your mixing. When you mix, it's going to allow you to know when you are compressing a bit too much. And I'll show you things that you can do. I'm using the compressor that came with Ableton. You can use any compressor for this. The rules remains the same. So let's see. Let me add a compressor to this now. Oh, I already have a compressor loaded here. So let's add a compressor to this. So this threshold you see on the compressor is what sets the limit. Think of the threshold as your, uh, how do I put it? As your fader. You know, when you, instead of moving your fader back to back, think of the threshold as your fader. So remember, uh, the lowest part of our dynamic range was minus 24. So let's bring, you should always judge this by your ear, not by, oh, the lowest point of this thing. But for the, for the sake of this tutorial, I want to do it like that. Let's bring it there. Minus 24. I always like to listen when I'm compressing. But for the sake of this, I want to do it this way so that you hear me. If you see, we're already getting some compression. If you look at our original signal, which is uh, which is from this contact, see how loud the volume is here compared to this one. If I bring this down, you will see that we'll get more and more compression, which means, simply put, you get more and more redu reduction in volume. Watch. Can you see how low this is? Can you see how high this is? So our original signal is loud enough you understand and the oh sorry our original signal is loud enough and the what we are getting from it see how low is it how low it is so this will be this is what they mean by saying oh you squashed the compressor it means it's over compressed uh i like to eq before compression but this one i'm explaining about compressor so let's do let's use the let's use it like this i like to eq like do some um, reduction EQ before compressing, then EQ again to add, you know, yeah, you get the gist. So for this, I will say about minus 25 or minus 24 is good. Okay, let's say minus 23 there about. So what I'm saying, what I'm telling the compressor to do is any sound that comes, any sound, I want any sound above minus 22 is what I want to be compressed. I don't want to affect my original sound, like my, I don't want to affect any sound below that. It sounds like, please follow me, watch again and again. I don't want to affect it. It means from here, all this side, no compression. The only place you get compression is on this from minus 24 to minus six. It's the only place compression is happening. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, and, the ratio is how I want it to affect. One to one means no compression. Like there's no, if you see when I play it on one to one, this GR stands for gain reduction. There's no compression happening because my threshold, think of the threshold as the volume and think of this as what, uh, how would I put it, as the lock. You know, you lock it. You can decide how you want it to open up. You can decide how you want to lock it. I think most of you guys, comp your compressor will be like this. Will have a straight line. So this line signifies the compressor. When they will tell you to do math in school, you will not pay attention. You do not know that you still come and meet math in this your music that you want to do in your life. So <laughs> yeah. So the uh, one to one is no compression. Two to one. Two, I think two to one is the next one here. Yeah. Two to one means for every two dB, you get one dB gain reduction. Do you understand? So let's see it. You start getting some compression here now. You see, the gain reduction is coming already. So, yeah, so that, that covers for threshold and ratio. So attack and release, they are the next most important thing that you need to know let's try to hear the compression before going for attack and release and stuff so like this now if you go if you go to um one to one like infinity 
if you have this cough, you're already limiting. This is a limiter. If you have it like this, yeah. This is a limiter. This is what your limiter is. Definitely, like, limiters are... Limiters are compressor, a hard compression. You know, when you set, like, a limit that no sound should go above this, you know. Ratio helps us say, okay, yeah, let's sum. If you look at this place, it's telling the signal that, okay, let's sum just pass through here. You get If it's like this, this is what your limiter looks like. There's a bar, there's a block road that's no stop. Nothing is going above this. So in churches, this is what they use when they are trying to send a signal to maybe to stream their service without getting like clipping and stuff. They set a limiter, and most of the all these things they don't. Most of the old consoles they come with um, compressor and not limiter. So if you set the limiter to something like this, nothing is going outside. You get everything will be squashed. It's not always good to add a limiter like to stuff if you don't have like a good headroom before adding the limiter you should try to work on your signal before i mean let's leave that that's another tutorial so yeah attack is simple what do you want the what do you want the compressor to do do you want the compressor to catch the sound do you want it to attack you know like when you have i'll, I'll use vocals to explain this but let's use the beat so there's what is called fast attack and slow attack. It's simple. Fast attack means how fast you want the compressor to attack the sound. So let's say you have an artist rapping and the artist goes, I skip. You know, the skip will have a spike. So do you want the compressor to help you bring down the spike or release the spike and compress the body? Let me show you what I mean. If you see this, the attack while focusing on the kick. So... If I say fast attack like this, if I say fast attack like this, I'm telling the compressor to react immediately the kick or the snare comes in. What you get. So if I say, it means it's going to, let me show you um, in context here. If you see this thing that's coming down, the gain reduction, it comes down anywhere the kick and the snare comes. And if the, if the hi-hat, if you play the hi-hat, you just get like maybe tiny or nothing itself. So. So, yeah, so I want the compressor to react some more. Yeah, you see, you see the spike, you see, because I increased the compression on it. So it happens like this. So if I want fast attack, I'll come to about this part. If you listen to this now, it's allowing slow attack, it's allowing the transient of our kicks, our drums to come. So you are hearing the. If you can't hear that, ah. You have to try again and again to understand because it takes a lot. Everybody will hear compression from the first instance. So you have to try. You have to learn how to go the extreme, then bring it back to the right amount. There's no, I can't tell you, oh, do two to one, do two to two. No, I don't know what signal you're trying to process. So see this now. We're hearing almost everything. The drum, the, you get. So if we bring it back here, you see, it sounds like it's at the back. Watched. yeah so about this part you should know like for your kick you should allow some kicks you want to allow your transients to hit the right amount so release is how you want to release it how do you want it to be do you want the compressor to still hold on to the compressor sound or release it like like come down fast attack slow fast slow fast slow or slow fast slow like slow fast so this one the release is the pullback the attack is the heat so attack release attack release so you can do attack release or attack release attack release so it's going to be if you see it's, it comes so this is fast release fast release like this you see the spike? Okay, let me try to over compress it so you understand what I'm saying. Let's bring down this a bit. Yeah. Don't ever come this this thing. It's not advisable to come, except you have a particular type of effect you're going for. But I'm using this to explain. I have to go the extreme for you to ex understand what I'm saying. 
See how funny it sounds. I can't even bear it. But yeah. So yeah. If I bring it to the slow, you see how long. See how how this spiky thing. This one now. It takes time for it to release it. Cause see, it's still going. It's still we're still going on. We're still going on. We're still going on. If I introduce on that one, you see, it's not releasing it on time. Because yeah, this is slow release. See fast release again. Let's look at the thing again. You see? Psst, psst, psst. So that is what um a compressor does. And after you must have processed all these things. Where your gain staging comes back in is you should always, always add it back, you know. Let's say for me now, if I want to compress this drum now, let's say, I'll say, I want it to hold on to the, this thing a little bit longer. Yeah. So this, this reduction that we're getting in gain, I would want to add it back by increasing Compression doesn't necessarily mean loud in volume because the mistake most of you guys make is to, if, including me before now, I used to I used to think, oh, when you compress a signal, it should be louder. No. it should re As a matter of fact, it should remain the same or close to the same. Let's, let me show you what I mean. So when you're trying to compress, you go back and forth. You see? I know this, I'm squashing it out because of the sake of this tutorial. So let's release it back a bit. So... Go back to minus 22 where we were. Yes. Then I want to add a little bit back. I'm supposed to use a glue compressor for the sake of this, but I'm using this compressor. A glue compressor is what keeps, if you're mixing like a drum, a drum, let me just use a glue compressor and compress it the right way, just like we just did here now. So a glue compressor, there are different types of compressor. They all work the same, but let me use a glue compressor so you understand what I'm saying more. So I'll go to minus 22 like we did before. Remember how I told you that compressors are all the same? Yeah. Then they release. I wanted to release it on time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, 4 to 1. 4 to 1 ratio is good for me. So if I go, you see how loud this is. This is a little bit more evened out. I will now make up for the gain, like make up for the reduction that we're getting. We're getting about minus 5 there, about minus 5, minus 6 gain reduction. You guys, I think I want this at minus 5. Yeah. So I will now add it a little bit back. So we we'll go. So if I go back and forth without it and with compression, without compression, you get almost the same with it. So that is the easiest way um, to use a compressor without, see, I'm still getting the same, the same amount of volume I was getting before I started. Without it, with it, you see more power, more punch, introduces more punch. Imagine if I go and add uh, an EQ to this now, add um, some harmonics, some maybe some saturation and everything. So this one now is going to be lit. You understand? So let me show you the same thing on vocals. Mic check one, two. Oh, I already did this. So for this, I did mic check one, two. It's compressed already. So I don't, uh, let me turn it off. Mic check one, two. Bitch no not uncool. Got a friend, got a... I never compress without listening to, you get without listening to the whole music. I like to compress while listening to the music itself. Mic check one, two. If we wanted to balance this with the beats we had earlier, remember, post fader, so bring the beats down a bit. Mic check one, two. Bitch no uncool. Got a friend, got a brother, I got no uncool. And I know part two. What are you... You get. Watch me. Check one, two. Bitch no uncool. 
Got a friend, got a brother, I got no uncle. So let me turn on the compressor so you see what's doing. Check one, two. Bitch, no uncle. Got a friend, got a brother, I got no uncle. Remember, there's no EQ, nothing on this. It's just only compressor. I just want you to hear what the compressor is doing on the signal. Let me check one, two. Bitch, no uncle. Got a friend, got a brother, I got no uncle. And I know part two. What a year part two. And I beat the top of paper, papa, beat pop, poo. And I recorded this with this mic. So it's not really the best mic to uh, record vocals on. If you don't understand any of these things, please leave a comment in the comment section and I will treat it again. So I'm going to do part two of this. That's if you don't understand. But if you understand, please let me know that you understand what I just said. And if you don't, it's fine. It's, you can't get it, you know, the first time you are just hearing about compressor. I'm just trying to break it down because we do it wrong. Getting the wrong amount of compression can fuck up your whole mix. Can scatter your whole mix. So how you see, let me try to let you see visually what the compressor is doing. Look at these peaks. Yeah, this, see, the peaks. And I will show you when, let me show you a compressed signal. How a compressed signal and an uncompressed signal. So let's go. Let's try to freeze this and bring it down here. Sorry. Okay, so look at these two signals now. Can you see how smooth this one is? Everything is on the same level. Nothing is making noise. No, if you look at the wave here, you see that this, this is what it looks like. Things to come out. Let me play you. Let me see. Let me play the same. You see, it's the same. Let me now take out the compressor on this one. See. Check one, two. Bitch, no uncle. Got a friend, got a brother. I got no uncle. Check one, two. You see? Check one, two. Bitch, no uncle. This bitch, no uncle. See this one. Check one, two. Bitch, no uncle. Got a friend, got a brother. I got no uncle. And I know part two. You get simple, simple, simple um, sound. See, we have, uh, I think we had a relatively fast, not so fast attack. is about uh, 0 0.51 millisecond. So that's how you compress, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you compress the right way. Go with your feelings. Mix your song with the way you feel. Don't try to go with numbers. Don't... Don't try to go with numbers. I'm, I'm still going to keep this. I'm going to make sure that we have how I go from subtractive EQ to compressing, then to EQ, then to saturation, to all those things that add colors to your sound. Yeah, so this is just an introduction to what a compressor does. This is not the main tutorial. We're still going to go in-depth into what a compressor does. We're still going to look at multi-band compressor. We're still going to look at compressors for compressing for colors you know so if you're interested in all those things please like subscribe leave a comment in the comment section let me know what you uh, what you are missing and if you have a if you have a song that you want to maybe have mastered you can send it to us over at world wave radio we can get it mastered for you one thing don't forget compress compressor is a volume you know is how you automate your volume if i want to get this and also get the same result. It's just simple. I'll just look for... Um, okay, let me come to my mix. I'll just look for my volume here. I think this... Okay, yeah, I think this is my volume. If you look at this, if you look at the screen on on this... Okay, let me come here. Um, mix. Yeah. If you look at my screen, so I can automate this, like, let's, let's say uh, I want to go... Let's see, I want to record one, uh, one, two, three. Yeah. Mic check, one, two. Bitch, no uncle. Got a friend, got a brother, I got no uncle. And I know part two. What a year, part two. And I beat the top of paper, pop, 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 pop. Check one. So that's it. I have. Mic check, one, two. Bitch, no uncle. 
Got a friend, got a brother, I got no... I just added compression to this thing, but I didn't add it by this guy right here. I added it with my volume fader. Freeze this. If I freeze this track now, if I bounce it in place, if I bounce it for some other people who don't know what freezing is, freezing on Ableton means if you bounce it in place. That's for logic or all those people. Yeah, you can see that this is similar to this, you get. Even though we didn't catch it, because normally I would go back and go and make sure it's on the right track, you know, go back to you to write it out one by one. So I just wanted to point out that so you, you guys don't get lost or anything. So peace, ladies and gentlemen. I go by the name Chris Beat, the drummer boy. Like, subscribe, and follow um, World Wave Radio. Uh, Instagram, TikTok, and all because they post stuff on there too so you can get more content, more stuff that you want. And yeah, follow me at chrisbeat underscore and I will catch you guys in the next video.